being a leader is the, you know, the quickest thing you can do is pull your troops together and try to give them some type of communication, even when you don't know what's going on. So first thing I want to say is right now, you don't have to have all the answers because nobody's ever dealt with this. Is um, it was funny, you know. I uh, I think Thursday was a bit of a wake up call for me, and uh, and the reason I say that is um, I've kind of you know I'm an eternal optimist. I'm also I'm also can be very pessimistic at times, believe it or not, and I'll explain that in a moment. But like Thursday's announcement, even though I knew it was coming, you know, there's been a lot of talk in the media and a lot of talk with coaching groups, and you know, I'm on I'm on all my coaching groups, my mentees, but then all my coaching and then I do too, and uh, there's been a lot of talk about trauma and things and uh, it's probably the first time i'd say yesterday or like wednesday where i was like mm, okay cool because i didn't like to like go there but yeah there's definitely a bit of trauma with this at the moment and uh, it's not it's 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 change all of a sudden it's not just a blip it's uh it's proper <laughs> and um and i'll give you some context for that statement in, in a moment you know we are living in unprecedented times um, to give you some statistics, I've seen some statistics say that 40% uh, of small businesses will not make it through this, 40%. Um, unemployment right now in the, in the US, even though it's a skewed stat because people have had to file for unemployment to, be, to get their furloughed, is the same rate as the Great Depression right now, immediately. Um, we are uh, conservatively saying the UK government's going to be down by, uh, statistics say, between 30 and 40%. Um, the UK, so UK um, trade is going to be down by 30 to 40% for this year. Essentially, everyone's lost a full quarter of trading. In my business, that's well over a million pounds in, uh, in, in turnover. So it's, um, there's a legitimate concern, legitimate planning, legitimate things to be worried about, legitimate rentals to pay, legitimate rates to pay. Um, and I'm going to get into that today. I've got different perspectives because everyone's, everyone's got their own little bits of trauma. And, you know, if you're self-employed, you're not earning anything. And that's traumatic, you know. And if you're employed, you're not sure if you've got a job to come back to. And that's traumatic, you know. And if you're a business owner, you've got um, rates and rentals sitting over your head now that you still have to pay and, and, and all those things. And uh, you're losing money every single day that you're not being open. And even if you're open, it's not enough to, you know, you're just trying to cover your, your, your expenses. So there's, it's the first time even I've acknowledged like this trauma. So first of all, I want to say, I just want to congratulate everyone for dealing with it, however you're dealing with it. Um, because I think right now, what is anything I know about business is business, um, business is the biggest blessing in the world, but it's also got um, the potential to make your heart quite hard because you've got so many challenges to deal with. And the pastor of my church always says he wishes, he wakes up every morning and his only wish is to remain soft hearted. And, um, and actually this week, my coaching group, we had Dr. Stu Bittman, just talking about that, remaining soft-hearted during this time. So I think empathy, uh, especially coming from a philosophy that we've all come from, in that there's many elements of this that are going to irritate a lot of us. Um, you know, and I've dropped down into the place of judgment also myself. But it's, um, I think the empathy is going to be the overriding thing that's going to be the thing that helps people the most right now. So I'll start with that. Um, I also want you to put in the chat, um, put in the chat for me, just how you're feeling right now and what your, what, what are your, what's your concerns? Because I haven't got anything prepared for you guys today. I am doing on average a webinar a day for some type of coaching group. I've been on like guests. I'm doing average of a webinar a day, sometimes two. And um, I can teach them pretty much anything you want, you know, whether it's relaunching your practices, whether it's concerns you have, whether it's communication. Um, and uh, just type in the chat what's going on, where you're at, what's your biggest... Um, What's your biggest concern right now? And, um, and I'll tell you what some, some of the things that we're working on. Uh, tell me where you're at. And it really helps me, guys. Let me know where you're at. What's your biggest, um, what's your biggest concern? Or what's your fears, concerns? What's happening? <laughs> Adam, thank you. Um, so ch charging, charges, keep going. Retention. Cool, cool. Keep going, keep going. Type in the chat, it really helps me. Con patients, yeah, retention won't come back. Fear. Someone said fear in the marketplace. Like, a patient's going to come back, you know. Uh, Laura, uh, retention. 
Yeah, it's a big thing to talk about right now. Retention, retention, fear among the public, big. I've tried to connect with existing patients and whilst I'm helping a few, a lot haven't connected back. That's kind of normal, but um, we'll get into that at the moment. Uh, if the ease loss side affects the number of patients allowed in the practice at one time, what do we do? What do we do? That's a great question. Claire, uh, found a perfect premises for new clinic. Should I do it now? New clinic. Wow, that's awesome. New clinic. Uh, Claire, before I move on, that you probably have the best time in the history of mankind to negotiate a silly, crazy rental reduction. So Claire, uh, should you do it? If that's your heart's desire, you do it. You're still looking for growth. It's it's going to be, most people are going to be retracting right now. The, 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 the challenge is going to be to remain like this in a time where everyone's retracting in fear. Those that can remain open-hearted and, uh, and, and, and abundance are going to, have 10 times the rewards it's where everyone else is retracting in fear so claire i would just say um should you do it um now is the best time in history to negotiate crazy rent reductions not even rent reductions rent free periods so when you sign a, a you prepare to sign a longer term lease i sign 10 to 15 year leases minimum minimum 10 to 15 year leases but you want to say to them look i'm prepared to sign a long-term lease whatever you feel comfortable with but i need a year free and then and then they might you might end up on six months so Claire, that's a huge reduction for you. Uh, not sure if um, I'll ever get back, Erica. It's, it's all. It's, I know it's 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 fearful times right now. I have a car of. Uh, I've been a car for fifty years. Um, will this nonsense uh, tip me into retirement? <laughs> I'll try and answer that best I can. Will patients want to come back in again? Relaunching at full strength. Okay, re so relaunch seems to be. Relaunch seems to be a big one. Um, uh, how to reassure patients when we when we do so the PPE thing I'll tell you some updates that we have getting in new clinics patient retention survival uh, coming back to empty practice uh, how many of you how many of you are feeling right now so that's where for me the first three weeks was like this is just a blip now it's like mm, kind of feels like we're starting from over again you know but I'll tell you a story right now about a dentist uh, that might put your mind at ease uh, a little bit uh, okay great uh, if it's a recession, do we reduce fees or do we keep them the same? Okay, so charges. Okay, cool. So is a recession, we reduce fees and how to staff call, how, Stefan, how to keep your staff calm. Okay, so leader. Okay, cool. Cool. So you haven't put something in the chat? I appreciate, uh, first of all, I really appreciate all of you that have put something in the chat. So let me start by saying this is um, my, one of my biggest teachers and, and um, mentors in the world is a guy by the name of Blair Singer. And um, I have um, Blair, Blair's, um, been one of my personal coaches for many years. Uh, Blaze, Robert Kiyosaki's best friend, rich dad advisor, and uh, an amazing human being. And so Connor and Mike and a few people on this channel, you would have been on the call. So Blair um, spoke to my inner circle group uh, recently, and um, I've spoken on stage many times with Blair, and Blair spoke on stage with presidents, and you name it. He's a, he's a big name, a rich dad advisor. He's, he's based in Phoenix. And Blair, probably, if there's anyone on stage right now who you admire, there's a very good chance that Blair in some way, same way, shape or form coached them. So Blair taught Robert Kiyosaki how to speak and he taught Les Brown. I mean, like, everyone's been influenced by him in some way, shape or form. And uh, he always says that right now, it was interesting, you know, listening to him. I've always got one thing for Blair and that right now, I think um, that uh, being a leader, being a leader is the, you know, the quickest thing you can do is pull your troops together and try to get them some type of communication, even when you don't know what's going on. So first thing I want to say is right now, you don't have to have all the answers because nobody's ever dealt with this. Nobody has ever, ever, ever dealt with this. We've never had this situation before in the history of mankind. People keep saying this and it's like lip service, but it's true. It's unprecedented times. We don't know. No one really knows what to do, right? And I think there's a certain level of um, ease that comes with that. And I think that um, I was just watching a thing of Simon Sinek recently. I think uh, the companies that are super vulnerable and, um, and transparent are going to be the ones that make it through this because it's the first time in history that I've seen, to answer your question on teams, it's the first time in history that I've ever seen that, that um, although, uh, and, and if you're a self-employed person on this call, I just want to say this is like probably your, your best placed position person right now is as someone who's employed because right now momentarily the government's propping up your, your wage uh, or at least paying your wage um if you're self-employed you're not haven't got any income 
But I will say this right now that almost any business owner would love to just not be getting any income. Let me say that again. A business owner would love to just not be earning. It, we would like business owners would swap with you, even though I highly recommend, I've got multiple businesses, so I'm in a blessed position, but a business owner would love to just not be earning. So, uh, so most people are losing thousands a day via rentals. And, you know, the landlords will probably have to give, uh, so if you, I've got eight or 10 landlords that we have to deal with, and some have been great and some have not been great. And I know you're all doing the same thing. So I'm super transparent with you guys. But the conversation right now is that every one of us who own the business is losing sometimes some of you thousands a day. I'm in thousands a day. We're losing um, because we have rentals over our head. Thousands a day, guys. And that every business owner, every single bricks and mortar business on the planet is in the same position. So the uh, uh, reason I'm saying that is just for some context. Just for some context is that um, if you're self-employed, it's really tough for you and I, I, and, I, and I feel free for you not to be able to earn because you've got family to provide for, you've got bills to pay and it's tough times. And right now, even ticking over and seeing the odd patient here and there, emergency patient doesn't feel like it's going to, you know, touch sides. So it's a tough position you're in and, uh, you know, there's nothing I can say that's going to make it all go away. We've just been extended for three weeks. Uh, but I will say this, um, I want you to just go, I always say this to my self-employed guys and my, my chiropractors is that um, when, you're, when you are, there's a time and place for it. And when you go into business, you take on risk. Okay. And you take on, uh, so just as a true story, by the way, I've had five practices phone me in the last two to three weeks to say, please, please, please just take the practice. I want to come work for you as an associate or verse or something like that. So what happens is when emotion goes up, intelligence goes down and um and, and and i see it in the marketplace already and we're like just breathe everything will be fine you know we've also had um, a whole bunch of associates contact us looking for work because right now and you can't blame their business owners because you know if if capacity's gone down by 70 percent or something uh well right now a lot more than that they they have to pay their bills so you know if you're one associate and this is a business owner the first thing that's going is the associate because you know they have to survive they have to survive so I just I think that it's going to be a really tough time right now just to stay out of a point, point place of judgment and really stay in a place of uh, empathy for everyone that's uh, doing the best that they can for the survival of the business. That's the first thing I'll say. Um, for employees on this, remember that um, right now you're, you're in a bit of a bubble, um, and I will talk about this now. You're in a bit, bit, of, bit of a bubble right now in that uh, it's a momentary thing that the government's propping us up, you know. They're going to pull back too. And for self-employed people who are getting the benefits, he said it on the call. You, by the way, when you take some, when you when you give somewhere, you've got to take it from somewhere. And he said it on the call. Those self-employed people that are now being propped up by the government, we're coming back for this. He literally said those almost those words. We have to, his, his words where we have to write the ship. You're going to pay so much. We're all going to pay so much tax to write the ship one day. So it's like a, just a short-term thing, right? So here's my advice. Number one is put your teams together and just be open and honest and transparent. You've done nothing wrong. This is the weirdest thing. You've done nothing wrong. You, this is not your fault. This has happened. But we can only respond, right? So you're either the tennis in life. You're, I'll go first. You're either, you have to look at it this way. You can either be at cause or effect. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try uh, share my screen with you guys. So can you all uh, see... Can you all see? Let's have a look. Let me see if I can share my screen with you guys. Um, one second. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to share my screen with you. You should be able to see. Uh, can you guys see that? Can you see that, Connor? Cool. Yeah. So let, let me just uh, do this for you guys. Okay, so you should see that screen and, and I'll be able to write in there. So in life, you are, this is one of my greatest teachers told me this, right? So you've got a choice right now is that we're, we're all in challenges and there's a concept, um, there's a concept of being at cause or being at effect, right? And what it means to be at cause and what it means to be effect is the following. Imagine now that you have a, by the way, forgive my drawing because it's going to look like a child drew these things, but you are, that is a, 
believe it or not, that is a tennis racket. <laughs> that is a tennis racket. All right. And the tennis racket, if you have a tennis racket, you also have a tennis ball, right? So here, here is this is the way to look at this. When we have a stressor, a stressor, we can either be at cause or we can be at effect. If you are at effect, you are essentially the tennis ball. You're the tennis ball. And the stressor becomes, and the stressor becomes the tennis racket. And you are at effect of the tennis racket in that you so much as to say you are moving emotionally or with the times you are simply being directed by the thing. So that's what it means to be at effect of the thing, of the stressor, of the challenge. And, um, and being at cause of the challenge or stressor is, the, is moving from being the tennis ball to moving the tennis racket. Now, this is, the work, this is not my work. This is work that I've got some of my greatest teachers and Robert Kiyosaki's teachers. So I work with a lady, her name is Jane. And uh, I've doubled down on my coaching right now because I need to work on me more than I've ever needed to work on me, right? To hold the space. So right now, wherever we can, we want to try to be the tennis racket to be at cause and not effect. Um, but I heard a brilliant analogy the other day and said like, whatever hand you've been dealt, whether you are uh, in the game of tennis, in the game of tennis, every single shot gets celebrated. In the game of tennis, every single shot gets celebrated. So in, so, so I, I just want to point out a few things for you right now. When you hit a terrible shot, you're not celebrating it, but your opponent is celebrating it. Someone celebrates every shot, a good shot or a bad shot, right? So right now, while our worlds have been changed around us and there's certainly, certainly trauma, I want to ask yourself this question. Um, you know, I, I'm actually busy writing like an open letter at the moment. And it's interesting. Robert Kiyosaki has been telling us for 30 years not to be self-employed. He's been telling us for 30 years not to just have one source of income. He's been telling us for 30 years not to work for money and make money work for you. For 30 years, you know. Um, and, and it's interesting. Um, I have looked at the situation. So just so you guys know that um, certain, you know, I'm in real estate and I'm also in uh, the information and, and expert business world. And those businesses are still making me money every single month. While wow. And I'm losing, but I'm losing a ton of money with my bricks and mortar businesses every single day, thousands of pounds, right? So it's an interesting dichotomous world. But if you look at that situation, while we are in a challenging time, this is the only thing that you can face. But this is really the only thing you can focus on. There's nothing you've done wrong. The only thing I can ask, tell you this is that in the game of life, business, whatever it is, the goal is to try be the, believe it or not, that's a tennis umpire. Um, the game is to try, is try to be the umpire and to simply watch from the outside and, and see, well, if there's cause and effect and every, and every single shot is being celebrated, how can I position myself to be in a position where, where I am celebrating shots? And that way, when you put yourself out of the environment a little bit and you're able to see, okay, well, is this pivot time for me? Is this time for me to at least be looking? I've been talking about going to real estate for a while. I've been talking about uh, you know, getting my coaching business up and running. I've been talking about having another form of income. Maybe you enjoy trading or whatever it is. Is this now time for me to learn another skill or, 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 or strategy? Uh, and I'll get into the practice stuff now, but I do want to say this. I want to say this is, um, is that uh, this is going to happen again. Let me say that again. This will happen again. And um, it happens every 10 years. Yeah, we've had, a, we've had an, a, an incredible run of 12 years, if you will, of a bull economy, the greatest economy we've ever seen, uh, lowest unemployment rate we've ever seen in the history of mankind. And, and my, the only thing about great economies is rising tides lifts all ships, right? It rises and lifts all ships. But the challenge with that is you don't, you, if, if, if the tide is up, you can't see who's naked on the beach when the tide goes out. It's only when the tide goes out do you see who's financially naked or, 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 or exposed. So, the, so my big lesson that you might get different from me than other people is, um, and I'll, I'll give you my story, guys. The reason that I, the founder of Intel said this, he said, he said only the, uh, only the paranoid survive. He said only the paranoid survive. And good times, you know, I'm included in this, by the way. It's like, everything's just fine, right? Everything will be fine. Everything's always fine. You know, you have a bad month, you have bad whatever, somebody leaves, a staff team member leaves or something, we'll be fine. And, um, and, and that's what a good economy does. 
And as you said, only the paranoid survive. So my lesson for me, for me is I, I feel like I've been preparing for this for 10 years and um, probably been preparing for this my entire life because of my background. And my background is this, some of you don't know this, mate, is um, I, um, my parents were entrepreneurs and, and they, uh, my parents were entrepreneurs and they ran businesses and they went uh, bankrupt twice. Okay. So we had loads of money and then we lost it all and we had loads of money and lost it all. And uh, I always, uh, I always remember going through that process and, you know, sometimes a pain is your biggest motivator and uh, all I had, my biggest why, my biggest why was that I just didn't want my children to ever go through what I went through with the two back. And I remember saying to my, my parents, you know, they really did the best. Everyone does the best they can. You know, they did the best they can. Everyone does the best they can at the time. That's all we can ever ask is do the best you can. And I said, well, you know, why didn't you not do it? Diversify, you know, why don't you have other forms of income? They just said, well, everything was so good, you know? Everything was so good at that time, but everyone just does the best they can at the time. So my lesson from this whole process, and I hope the lesson you take out of it is when it happens again, when it happens again, not if, but when it happens again, what, how, have you, how are you going to respond? How are you going to respond from this process right now? How are you going to pivot? How are you going to change? What are you going to do differently? I mean, there are some practices right now, just so you guys know, especially my inner circle group, who um, ha have got um, multiple double figures of income coming in from membership still. Now they're still having conversations about that. And uh, I've got a few things on pricing that I want to go through with you now, which I think is very relevant to, this, to, to what we've spoken about, but they've still got income coming in. So how are they doing that? And why aren't you all in that position in some way, shape or form? Because you could have increased value to maintain the revenue. So how are you going to pivot now so that when it happens again, not if, when it happens again, uh, how are you going to be better placed? And uh, one of my teachers and Blair's teachers is a guy by the name of Nat Newton, two-time world Taekwondo champion. And he always says, um, he says that uh, sometimes a crisis, a crisis is sometimes the universe way of forcing change that was trying to happen anyway. Let me say it again. A crisis is sometimes the universe's way of forcing change to happen when it was supposed to happen anyway. Um, so your crisis now that is happening is trying to, you know, get you to have a lesson. And, um, we had a call Stu and he said such Stu yesterday, Stu Bittman and he, to my group, and he said something very profound. He said, uh, what if you created this? I want you to ask yourself a question of why you created the situation. Now I know you didn't create the situation. You guys understand, but what if you did create it? Why would you have created the current situation? What's, what, what, what crisis, what change was trying to happen that has been spurred on by the current situation? You guys understand, right? So if you look at my inner circle group, most of them have started YouTube channels. They've start, they've really become information marketers overnight, which I'll talk about in a moment. But it's, I've seen them become these incredible marketers overnight and the value they're giving and the extra stuff they're doing has been insane. So what is this process? created for you what what changed what's the crisis done that's the, what's the positive that's coming out of this? how are you going to be placed in a couple years time because of this process you know in some such some way shape or form so for me um anything i all i knew was growing up because i'd been through some of this is that just how just how fragile um our income really is just how fragile many of those things are. And, and all I want you to get from it is, you know, in the good times was everything was gonna be okay, but how are we gonna pivot now and how are we gonna create change that uh, creates stability for our families long-term, all right? So I've always been saying, I've always been, I've always been taught that the worst number in business is one. So that's the first thing I'd say. Even if, even if your income is only from, um, from pay per visit, you want to go, okay, well, I don't want anyone pay per visit. So I want, I want, you know, care plans. And then that's not enough. And then what if I also have a membership business as part of that? And maybe I'll diversify into another business a little bit, or maybe I have some property. But now is what's the lesson we're going to take from that? So, so far in the chat, in the chat, in the chat, please give me some feedback. What are you learning so far? What's your aha so far? What's your aha so far? Go for it. Right in the chat, right in the chat quickly. What's your aha so far? What are you learning? What are you learning? What are you learning? Awesome, in the file, you've got to prep for the future. Diversity, for sure. For sure, be the umpire, love it. 
Love it. What else? What else? What else? I require feedback. Pivot. Nice. Add value. Multiple forms of income. This is definitely going to happen again, Mike. Definitely. Understand that. In 10 years, where am I going to be? Awesome, 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 awesome. Be the racket. You're good. You guys are all good. I'm going to go through this now. Remember, you did nothing wrong. You, you've done absolutely nothing wrong. It's not your fault. In fact, everybody listening to me right now, please take a deep breath in. And breathe out. It's not your fault. You've done nothing wrong. So now pivot and be, and be the tennis racket. What are you going to do? Are you going to be at cause or are you going to be at fact? Abby, nice. Nice. Prepared for absolutely. No, no one could have prepared for this, but I feel, I feel like I've been prepare, preparing for this for my entire life, you know, um, because I, I've, I've got to help. Maybe it's a little, maybe it tips over at times to unhealthy paranoia, you know, um, because of my experiences, you know. Um, Christ is the universe way. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, great, great. Guys, if you haven't typed something in, please type something in. I need some feedback. I need some love. What are you learning? What are you learning? What are you learning? Type it in. Type it in. Listen. So here's the thing. All I want you to ask yourself is this question. Is you are now dealing with a crisis. And, and this, is, this, this next sentence I'm going to say to you now haunts me. It haunts me. Uh, in that I, and I heard one of my coaches say this. And it said, he said the sentence haunts him. And it is, when we look back at this time, when we look back at this time, are you going to be proud? It haunts me. Like, am I going to be proud of what I achieved in the, in, in the six weeks that we're locked down? It haunts me. Like, am I going to look back and go, like, I worked my bum off. And then there's time for connection. There's time for slowing down. And I'm good at the hustle. I'm good at that. But sometimes I need to be taught. Uh, sometimes my mentors often have to taught, teach me more of the grounded stuff. And that's why I surround myself with those people. So I get that, but um, uh, that, 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 write that down. Are you going to be proud? When you look back a year from now, two years from now, 10 years from now, are you going to be proud of what you did in the, next, in the last six weeks to eight weeks? There could, there's never a better time in the history of mankind to double down on your systems. You know, what about those emails that you've been meaning to write and the autoresponders? What about that welcome series when someone becomes a new patient and there's 10 automatic emails that go out to them? Those emails, what about writing those now? What about making sure that you've got a touch points planned in at like 10 visits, 20 visits, 30 visits, you know, that they're automated emails or, 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 or direct response um, letters. Now is the best time in the history of mankind to work on that stuff. What about working on strategies um, that you, online marketing? I mean, our, my inner are all getting their Facebook ads ready. We're helping with them. They're getting, they're ready. It's ready to rumble. We're putting it in there. We are getting ready to rumble. We had a period of like shut down and, from next week, Monday, it's time. It's like now we're like ready to rumble time again, connection time again, getting back into the game time again. So really planning for the launch. So I, uh, I just wanted to say that thing and uh, just be soft with yourself because it's hard to, uh, I know those questions, I'm creating a little bit of pain for you guys, but um, sometimes you never pain, you never really change into the pain of where we're at is great enough. And sometimes most of us will not change into the pain of where we're at is great enough. But sometimes pain can be a good thing. Sometimes it can spur us on to do great things. Many of you look back at what you started now and what you thought was possible, not possible now, and look back in five years, 10 years time and go, wow, it was all because, thank goodness for the crisis, or else I would never have got off my ass and done the thing that I was fearful to do. Some of you look back and go, thank goodness for the crisis, or else I would never have created a second income. I would never have done that property. Do you know that I've got some of my inner circle members that are someone, one, one of them is closing their second property within, within the crisis. Like just about to buy their second property within the crisis. She's never bought a property in her life. She's about to, she's pivoted. She had money sitting in the bank. Just about a second, a second, a second property. I've had like four of my inner circle members launch um, info mode businesses, expert businesses. Like that's it. It's time. It's now. So you will look, what are you going to look back? How are you going to look back? Are you going to be proud? So a few questions, some practical questions. And um, there's always two elements to personal development, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach with my, my notepad again. So first of all, please understand the first part of this all is there's always two parts to learning and we often forget about one of them. Okay. So the first part to learning is, okay, cool. 
So the first part of learning is this, is in some way, shape or form, we have um, BD, BD. BD stands for business development, business development. And then we also have something called PD, PD. In my experience, in my experience, like most of us, like even people who come to me for help, most of them are looking for this, you know, how to get new patients and how to do meetings and how to do a set up structures in their business and accountability charts and how to do like all the how to stuff. But the thing that we probably ignore the most is PD. And in my experience, uh, this is why I surround myself with so many coaches, by the way, I'm investing, I've, I've literally doubled my coaching at the moment. Um, because I know that I need to work on this right now more than I've ever had to work on it. Because in my experience, the BD only happens secondarily to the PD, right? I'm just like you guys. Remember this. Every single level has a new skill. So what you, the stress and whatever you're experiencing, it's not any different for someone at a different level. It's just every level is a new devil. So I know that for me to pass, to get through this, I have to work here probably more than I've ever worked, right? Uh, because I know, I absolutely know that when emotion goes up, we know intelligence goes down. So that's the first thing I'll say is surround yourself with as many people as you can that are going to help you with PD, 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 PD first, wherever you, wherever you can. And that's why I started this. I mean, I've been going now for 30 minutes and we haven't even done one strategy. And I know most of you are jumping on and say like, I need strategy, I need strategy, I need strategy. Well, sometimes you don't need strategy. Sometimes you need to breathe. I remember jumping on a call with Blair actually, and uh, I was having a, a stressor, let's say, and I was talking, talking, talking. I was like, Blair, what am I going to do? And what am I going to do? And what am I going to do? And, da, 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 da. and this is this, this, this. And he looked at me and I was talking for like 15 minutes. And, and then eventually I stopped and he just looked at me and he said, cool, first thing, breathe. Just breathe. Breath is good. So PD is the first thing you have to work out. Now let's talk about some strategies, right? Let's talk about some strategies for a little bit. Um, cool. So strategies. Uh, okay, I'm going to talk about charging right now. Okay, so this is a different, this is a big conversation. This is a really, really big conversation. But most people that come to work with me in some way, shape or form normally make an extra at least double figures a year plus simply just raising their prices. So I am a couple of pieces of advice for you guys. Amazon has created something called the shopping culture, right? So when people, people will shop because Amazon's created that. So on your website, get rid of all prices. Now more than ever. You do not want prices on your website. We do not have any prices on my website. None. Why? I do have a price inquiry button. The reason I don't want prices on my website is because, yeah, they may shop around and they may be shopping for, for cheaper prices right now. And if they want the cheaper prices, guy, I'm not the guy for them, right? But what you don't want to be, all I'm going to say to you all is this, is this is probably, this, this piece of advice really, really helped me. Right now, try, try maintain revenue at all costs, at all costs. So definitely do not do this. Definitely do not lower your prices. Do not lower your prices, definitely. I'm not saying for existing customers and I'm not saying don't hyper, in, hyper incentivize certain options like whether, whether you want to offer a um, membership or, or care plans, that's a different conversation because we are entering into a phase where cash is king. So having the, ha, we've always been in this phase, but the argument I've often had to deal with with chiropractors is yes, but the guy's coming once a week, by the way, we don't know that because he hasn't booked ahead of time and he's just said he would, and he's prepared to pay full price. Why would I give him a discount to pay for 20 in advance? Where, 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 where allowed and ethical, by the way, but if we're entering into a phase specifically now where cash has never been more important, right? So you will, you, you absolutely right that a bird, a, bird, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. So the chance is that they could do that, but you absolutely want to um, nail that deal down if you can. It's called deal, if you're getting enough deal flow from new patients, you want to make sure you can do that. So that's the first thing. If you're a membership business, 
do not drop your prices. You know, make sure you add more value and add a call. And uh, look, I've got many businesses. I've had extra value, extra value, extra value. You know, even in my inner circle group, they now get a, a you know, we actually hold their hand through becoming a published author. They didn't sign up to do that. But now we've added that into the mix because those, the times have dictated that everyone has to pivot to add more value where they can. So don't drop prices, just add value. Um, I've never done more one-on-one calls in my entire life. I don't do one-on-one calls. I've never done more one-on-one calls in my entire life because my, my, my tribe needs it. So think about your tribe. What can you do? You know, um, uh, from, a, from a content perspective, if you're not creating content right now, whether it's recipes and like things like that, anything, we've never, we've never ever in the history of mankind, I mean, when could you ever do a webinar on a Friday afternoon at 12 and have 120 people show up. <laughs> now think of what's happening here. We've never in the history of mankind. I always have to do my webinars at eight o'clock at night. I don't have to do that anymore. We are like my last two webinars, four to 500 people on both. Because, I may, because of this, because we're in a time right now where people are sitting at home twirling their thumbs. And I was listening to an interview by a very famous marketer yesterday by the name of Dean Jackson. And if you don't, there's a massive, there's an incredible podcast called, called I Love Marketing by Joe Polish and Dean Jackson, and it was Dean Jackson from that. And he said, the thing is that Netflix doesn't talk back to you. And that's no connection. So there's two things I want to give you. That's the first thing is people are desperate for this. So he has, he has already the businesses that, that are coming out of this. Uh, chefs are doing, this is true, by the way, people are making money right now while everyone's crying. So uh, chefs are already doing at home chef classes. They'll send you all the recipes in like a box and then this, everyone's got their zooms out and then everyone's cooking at home. Like, but like, could, we're not gonna make money from it, but could we do that? Could you do that? But like, hey, who wants it? It's like, just to cover, just cover the cost of the food, et cetera, come through. The food's gonna arrive at your door and it's how to make bone broth. And I'm gonna send you the whole thing. I'm gonna teach you the whole through the process. It's Wednesday night at seven. We're gonna go through the whole process. It's just adding value, right? Those of you who've got some skills for yoga and massage and well, yoga and Pilates and things like that, it's like, Cool, we're having a yoga class every day at 10. Um, what's Joe, what do Joe Wicks do? Same thing. So if you have skill sets like that, it's like, cool, every day, 10 o'clock, let's do it. Yoga class, stretch class, meditation class, let's do it every day at 10. What, about, what did I do for my inner circle group? Every single day, we've got a call. Every single day for the last three weeks, we've got a call with my inner circle group. Every day, right? So, and I've got guest speakers and I've got uh, HR people coming on board and I've got strategists and I've got marketers and we've had some incredible, incredible guests come on already and, um, and it's been cool where Blair come on and people like that. And we've got some other people uh, like, uh, how many of you guys heard of someone like Les Brown and uh, the guy from uh, Men of from Mars, Women of Venus, that guy and, and uh, Chicken Soup uh, for the Soul, him. So we're in discussion with all these people to give more value. So it's the same for your tribe. It's the same for your tribe. And um, it's, the first time, it's the first time in history, there's two things. The first time in history, I've seen um, chiropractors, bricks and mortar people have to become information marketers. So let me explain that term. This is how all marketing should happen, but sometimes it doesn't happen this way. But all interactions start with information first, right? So what happens is that you, you, the people have the podcast, they've got the YouTube channel, they've got the videos going out. And then from there, there's more information. There's the free reports and there's the free this and there's the free book. And by the way, if you haven't got my book, it's free. It's got everything that I've done. It's free on my website, right? You just pay for the shipping. That's for you to learn from that. You could even go through a process and go, can you do that for your practice? You damn right you can do that for your practice, right? So right now is the first time in history I've seen bricks and mortar people really embrace the concept of, please write this down, information first, information first. Okay, it's the first time in history I've ever seen it. It's amazing. Like the minus, I've been preaching. I've been like my my inner circle uh, clients are are laughing at me because I've been telling them I'm like I'm like having a rant to them. I've been telling them this for years. And now everyone's had to do it. So let me give you an example. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Let me share my screen again. Cool. So this is how. This is the fundamentals of your business and marketing. So. There's a couple concepts I'm going to talk about. One concept, and I'm ready. just some strategy for you guys. So, so hang tight. Number one, you want to maintain revenue at all costs. Uh, so don't. What I mean by that is, if people are on memberships, try and maintain the membership and add value. Tell them that you're going to accrue. 
tell them that you're going to do things like, listen, we're going to keep your membership. If they don't ask about it, keep the membership. But now for that same membership fee, that your whole freaking family gets adjusted. Like it doesn't matter. You guys understand? It doesn't matter because the family wasn't getting adjusted anyway. But now, and put a limit on it and say, look, thank you so much. We really appreciate you supporting us during this time. We're going to keep your revenue. We're going to keep your, your memberships. But what we are going to do is come to the party and that for that same membership fee, now you get, you get to bring your partner as well and there's no extra charge for the rest of the year. You guys understand? It's, it's all in. It's not business as usual. Maintain the revenue at all costs. Do not drop your prices. So that's the first thing I want to say is you want to, make, you want to make, be maintaining revenue. The next thing I want to say is you want to be connecting where you can. And even like I haven't done, a, I've done in certain businesses, I've done a really good job at this, but we need to even connect even more than we are. So try reach out, jump on one-on-one -on -one calls, add value wherever you can. Now we want to be doing value. And I believe we're going into a time where a concept of something called reverse customer loyalty is is the most important most important thing we've ever it's the it's the most important time in the history of mankind to show reverse customer loyalty which means we always say about how do we how do we get loyalty from our patients etc how do we get retention but now's the time we have to reverse it because how all of a sudden i tell you if there's anything that's come from this whole crisis it's massive appreciation for the current from the revenue we had how many guys agree like how many of you right now are like so like you look back and you're like, I was, I, I took it for granted, but oh my word, I'm so grateful for those 150 people or 100 people or 80 people that came in every week. Like I didn't even give it a thought right now. How many of you, ask, how many of you right now would just do, give anything to just have the same number of visits next week as you had in just about your quietest week in the last six months? You'd be like, oh my, like, please can I have that back? So the thing that's come from it is um, good times breed, good times breed complacency. In my business too, guys, you know, like at the end of the day, I'm very good at marketing. I'm very good at marketing. I'm always, I can always generate new customers, but now it's going to be a bit more difficult to generate new customers. You understand? There's fear in the market, etc. So here's my biggest tip, and I'll just about leave you with this today because I'm going to talk about it for a while. And um, there was a, there's a story about a dentist right and um a dentist uh, a traveling dentist in america and he traveled around america and all he did all he did in america was go from city to city and he'd get to the city and he'd phone all the dentists in the city and he would say hey listen um you know i know you've been in practice for a while you've probably got a whole bunch of paper files this is quite a few years ago now you've got quite a few paper files that you just probably want to get rid of uh, or don't want, or what they call in uh, in America, they're called drop off or um, or drop out patients or inactive. It's like all your inactive, just all those files you don't want. Let me do you a favor. And there, there were different rules on on uh, uh, HIPAA rules and uh, and uh, GDPR rules back then. And um, he said, let me just take those old files that you don't want. That's all he did. So essentially, he took other people's junk, what they didn't want, right? And you have all got a lot of you. I mean, one of my inner circle members has got 30 years worth of files. And all he's doing in this time, he's taking 6,000 files and putting them, he's never contacted, they, they haven't, that like, all he's doing is taking those 6,000 files and putting them on a CRM or his computer system. Now he's able to monetize that and reactivate because I think we're going to a phase where it is already anywhere from five to 15 times more expensive to get a new patient as opposed to reactivate one. Okay. So now is the, we have to really double down on our existing client base more than we've ever done. So this guy would travel around and all he would do is get the files of everyone he didn't want to see. And he made a million dollars a year doing that. So he did. Now, the big lesson that I get from that is if he made a million dollars a year from other people's junk, essentially stuff they had discarded, what are we discarding under our noses right now? How many of you have got, how many of you've got some old patients that just dropped off care? How many of you got files to go through? How many of you 
uh, if there's one, one thing you start with, go back to the last year. Okay, so let me first introduce you to this. So, and then uh, this is really the, where you're gonna get your gold today, would be, um, if you haven't heard of this, I'm sure you have, this is the 80-20 rule. So have you guys heard of the 80-20 rule? The 80-20 rule is that 20% of your effort or input often results in 80% of the outcome. So uh, in a business, it often says that 20% of the customers will be responsible for 80% of the revenue. Okay. Now I know you might go, yeah, yeah, I've heard of that, but I promise you, you don't fully understand the significance of that because should you be sending a handwritten note to every single client right now? Yes, you should. Every single one. Should you be phoning every single one? Like now we're going into the phase as we come out of this. Yep. You should reach out to every single one, but are you gonna? Probably not. So here's what you can do though. And why this is relevant is can you draw a list? of your top 20% spenders. So there's a rule in business that a buyer is a buyer is a buyer, which means that people that are your most loyal customers, A, are responsible for 80% of the turnover. So if I, if I had to choose one segment to work with, it would be this 20% A, because I can do it from a functional perspective. I've got enough time to do it. I can just about reach it. And, and they, I'm gonna give my biggest bang for my buck. You guys understand? So this is where I would focus with all of you is I would draw this list up. There's a couple of lists. One, you want to be looking at, looking at inactive clients right now who, that let's say that by definition is they haven't been in for three months and you want to go back for like the last two, three years and at least do this stat. I want to know everyone's name who has not been in for the last three months that has spent above what you, or, or had above a certain amount of limits that you decide are high spent. So you may start and say, I want to know every single client that has not been in that spent above a thousand. And I want to see how big the list is. So I might look at the list and I might go, wow, there is um, 4,000 people on that list. They are inactive that have uh, not had, I have not seen in the last three, four, five years. They're like, oh, that's quite a big list. So should I do something for them? Yep, I should do something for them. But now I want to take that same list and I want to go, um, I want to go that same list. What's my top 300? What's my top 300 of that list? What am I doing for them? Am I going to send them something like really cool in the post? Am I going to call every single one of them? What am I going to do for them? So you want to double down on inactives that have been your most loyal customers. And that's what I talk. That's what I'm talking about when I'm, when I'm talking about this Re reverse customer loyalty should be for our entire customer base, but you want to focus right now or if you can, on the top 20% because it's just about manageable for you. Just about manageable for you to go to every single one, the phone, every single one, the right doing my freaking handwritten letter if you have to. Whatever you got to do, send them a freaking gift card in the post, send them a whatever. Because, I mean, guys, I'm working hard enough, ever worked my entire life doing this thing because that's what I'm doing for like that business is I'm going all in for my customers. All in. Done with your books and one-on-one -on -one calls and extra stuff and done for you newsletters and just going all in because I want to, my first and foremost, I'm looking after my existing customers because they're right under my nose. They're the gold under my nose, right? Those are super, super, super important. So it's then the other list that's important is, so you've got inactives, inactives, high spends and go back and just, you must know those names. Then you also want to do the opposite of that is active high spends. Now it should be the whole active list. If you haven't got a massive diary right now or schedule, that's good in a way because you can reach out to every single one of them, but should you be keeping in personal contact with every single one of them, especially now from next week? Like, yeah, like massively so, massively so, massively so. So that's something that I, you know, special announcement yesterday. You know, we had a, we had a meeting this morning, myself, my business partner was like, cool. From next week, it's, we shifting gears from next week. We're shifting gears from next week because maybe it was my naivety, but you know, a three week thing is just a blip, but it's not a blip anymore. So we have to shift gears and adapt even next week, which is a whole bunch of things that we got planned for next week. So, so far, so far, so far, let me stop sharing with you guys. So far, guys, are you learning something? Are you learning something? Are you learning something? Give me a yes. Give me a yes if you're learning something in the post. If you're learning something, what are you learning? What are you learning? Julie, good to see you. Mike. Kirsty, Kerrick, Mark, Jake, give me a yes. Give me some love. When you do webinars one day, you'll appreciate it so much, I promise. And you should be doing webinars, by the way. You should be doing something. 
Give me a yes, give me a yes, Rebecca. Awesome, 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 awesome. Tom, I appreciate it. Samber, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys. Give me a yes. Jake, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you both. Cool. So I just want to be respectful of time here as well and everyone's time. But if there was any tip I'd give you, so hopefully I gave you some PD. And by the way, every level, every devil is a new, uh, every level is a new devil. I'm working just as hard as you guys, you know, and, um, and, and do the work, do the work now. And I'm going to, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this kind of, so here's my, here's, here's some of you have seen this already, but here's, here's what's going to happen. 23, we're 2020 20 now, 2022. There is an, a couple of outcomes, a couple of outcomes, 2022. So we're all here now, right? So some people are going to be dear in the headlights and they ain't going to do anything emotionally. No emotional work, no PD, no BD, nothing. And they will slowly just decline. And they look back at 2020 and that's going to be their journey, right? And then there's going to be a couple people that and what they call is we've all got we've all got cracks. You guys get that? We've all got cracks. We've all got chinks in our armor. And what the crisis does is really it really shows up your 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 weaknesses. So now there's all these cracks in our armor. And right now is you're filling in the cracks. You are learning the skill set. You're learning the marketing strategies. Like I don't even I don't care if it's not mine, by the way. But if you if you're ever going to get a free book and you're not prepared to do it now. Like, I, I don't even know what to say. And it doesn't have to be mine. But go get someone's book on marketing. If you're not prepared to do it now, it's free. But don't even do mine. I'm saying do somebody's. Do somebody's training. And by the way, I'm speaking to the converted here. I'm not constantly here. I'm just passionate. Because you wouldn't be on this call if you weren't. You understand that? There are no mistakes in the world. You wouldn't be on this call if you didn't really believe that. You guys understand that? So, you're filling. There's some people are going to fill in the cracks here. And you know what's probably going to happen? They, they, they do, do a little bit of work, but they'll just coax, they'll just go by. And they will, and they'll probably dip a little bit and they'll probably look back in 2020 and they'll look back at where they are now and they'll be probably the same place. And then there's gonna be some people, there's gonna be some people right now that really work hard, that really fill in the cracks, that really honest, hard look in the mirror, that really, whether it's pivot a second income, whether it's work harder than they've ever done their client base, whether it's take those files and put it on, whether it's write the 55 emails that you need to write in the automated sequence, they really do it now. And all that's gonna happen is, they may take a little blip, and then what's gonna happen, they're gonna look back, and in 2020, they will look back at their journey, and they'll go, woo, thank goodness that happened. Because look at all that filling in the cracks I did. You guys got understand? So, I've said this three times, but I will finish with this. There is three words that I want you to be um, careful of right now. And this is as true for me as anyone. The number one word that a, a bad economy, because we are going into a bad economy, that you cannot afford to be in any way, shape or form entitled. Entitlement is going to destroy businesses. Entitlement is going to destroy individuals. Because we've been able, honestly, guys, call a spade a spade, we've been able, able to be entitled for a long time. New patients just came. Businesses just ran, you know. Uh, entitlement, and this is my biggest thing, is like you have to really put yourself in the place. I've got to earn it again. I've got to go. What you did in the beginning, the, the, the gentleman who's been practiced for many years, what you did in the beginning to grow the practice is what you're going to need to do now again. And for business owners, for, for employees, the word that's going to really destroy employees is the word that's not my job. They're going to have a tough time if that book happens in your vocabulary at all. For business owners and self-employed, this is for employee, this is for employed. This is going to be the word that kills you. For self-employed and business owners, the phrase that's going to kill you and me and all of us is any sort of ism. I, but to grow to where I was, I didn't, I didn't have to ism. I didn't, I didn't have to do it. 
to, why do I have to now phone everyone and do Zoom calls and broth lessons? And because I didn't have to ism, I didn't have to do it to go to where I am, or I haven't had to do it to where, to where I got. So any ism, well, why should I have to ism? Anything like that in Titan was like, oh, I didn't have to do it to go to where I am. Why should I have to do it now? I didn't need to do it to do this in the past. Any ism is going to be your biggest downfall. And I will finish that. Those are the two things I'll say is that this phrase is going to kill more businesses than anyone knows of entitlement for employers, for employed people. It's going to be, and by the way, it's been an employee's market for many years. I mean, but right now, even with the furloughs, like hundreds of thousands of people that are, that are unemployed, any, any hint of this is going to really destroy your careers. And if you're self-employed in a business only, any hint of this is going to destroy your careers going forward. So on that joyous note, <laughs> I love and appreciate you guys. Bang on. I'm never on time. i never finish anything on time. You know what they say? Give a speaker a chance to speak and it never shuts up, right? So uh, what I'd love to do, what I'd love to do, guys, is could you please do me a favor? is in the chat now, and I appreciate this. This is where the learning happens. This is where the learning happens. Is Kirsty, thank you. Thank you, guys. Please put in the chat right now what one thing, what's your big aha? And everyone else is going to learn from your aha. This is what they call cooperation. And if you read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and there was a book called, written called The Crash Course. And he said, in times like this, when you're going through a crisis, the single most important thing is you have is your community. And 140 people have showed up to this. And this is a community. So you will learn more from other people's ahas than you will from yours. So this is important. Please write it in the chat now. Write in the chat now. What's your biggest aha? What's your biggest lesson? You know, and I'm grateful for Connor and I'm grateful for Mike. They don't have to do this, you know, but he said it in the book. The single biggest asset you have right now is your community. The single biggest asset you have right now is your community. Can you be sharing your emails, your emails that you've written with your people? Can you be collaborating? Can you be interviewing each other? That's what my inner circle members are starting doing. If you're doing a bro and broth lesson on YouTube, can you be sharing that with some of your, like, old idea with some people you know? You've got to collaborate now. Um, good job, Kevin. What's your biggest aha? No isms. I love it. Uh, I'll write the same patients who are saying Christmas. Love it. Christmas card. Do anything right now. We are, we are nothing with our patients. They are our gold. They are gold. How grateful are we? You know, um, those of you that don't know my brother, I always say my, my brother has, my brother has, is one of the only people I know who is eternally great. I've seen and such gratitude for his customers without a crisis, without a crisis. And he is in the way he, he looks after, he always said to me, he says to me, he always says, he, sometimes you'll just say out of the blue, you'll be like, man, I'm so grateful for that guy. He comes to see me once a week, every single week. And, and, and like, oh. How many of you are grateful for your patients that see you, that just came? They just come to see you once a week or once every two weeks and you never had to do anything. How many of you are grateful for those people now? It's like, oh, so grateful for you. Thank you. But we maybe never acted like that. Please write, please write it down. Please write it down. Time to give value back. Connect, contact. Thanks, that was great. Aha moments is this isn't our fault. Not your fault. Take a deep breath, guys. Not your fault. Well done. Uh, diversify, pivot, importance of adding value. Uh, focus now, focus now. This is not a holiday. It's not a holiday. You know, um, yes, there's trauma. Yes, there's challenges. But are you going to be proud when you look back now? Filling in the cracks, baby. Cover the cracks. I love it. Work on the cracks. Love it. We've got some crack addicts here. Get it? <laughs> the jokes don't get any better. That's just, like, they're not going to get any better, I promise. Uh, importance of reverse customer loyalty. Uh, it is time to contact. Oh, absolutely, Galaxy Tab A. Eh? It's time to. It's definitely time to contact your pay. Oh my word! It's time to contact them, phone them, love on them, do whatever you have to do. Like kill them with love. Kill them with love. Go mad. Like you can't do it enough. I'm working my ass off for my patients at the moment. It's freaking exhausting. But I know I'm going to be proud of them, and I'm proud, proud of the most when I come out of this. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Hey, you guys are awesome. That's it. You guys, I'm done. I hope you uh, appreciate that. The only plug I will say is if all you did now is you just freaking got a free marketing book, go do that. It's like, that's all you have to do. I mean, um, and then I am holding a, I'm going to be holding a live one day. Keep an eye, actually, I will say that. 
I'm holding a live full day training. It's going to be five or six hours and it's going to be like a relaunch uh, training. I will teach for three, four, five hours of exactly what I'm doing now. I'm also going to bring on my team to teach you some Facebook stuff. I'm going to bring on my team to teach you some uh, reactivation stuff, some emails, etc. So it's going to be a full day's live training with multiple cameras. And we're just going to go. It's not a multi-speaker event. It's like a, hey, let's get stuck in. You better have notepads and pens. You better have calculators out. We're going to work out your break-evens. We're going to work out ROI. We're going to work out how many people on your patient list. I'm going to go deep dive for a full day. How many of you would like that? You guys like that? Comment yes. Comment yes. Well, thanks, guys. So yeah. I'm going to be doing that soon. So just that's my new plug. Just keep an eye out for that. Love and appreciate you guys. Yeah. Connor, that's Ryan, where can they get that from, sir? How can they sign up? Oh, sorry, sorry. Go to dcpracticegrowth.com. DC Go to dcpracticegrowth.com. And then it's, you just pay for the postage. That's all you pay for. Just to be clear, I, do, I'm a, I lose money when I send this to you. I lose money when I send this to you. So dcpracticegrowth.com. Or you can buy it from Amazon if you don't buy it from me. Amazon is $20, $20 on Amazon. And I think the, the postage is like $7.95 actually, like five pounds. So uh, dcpracticegrowth.com, just go grab the, the free book. I'll let you lose money by sending it to you. But go get it. It's awesome. I love and appreciate you.